Hello there. How are you doing, everybody? Of course. As soon... As soon as I start... As soon as I start talking... Kitty's moving. What you doing over there? Hmm? What you doing? Wrap her face against the thing. Okay. So, <clears throat> plan for today is to draw clouds like those that you can see right now. So, kind of like Chinese styled. Um. I don't know if like Chinese cloud is like the the proper name for those kind of style this kind of style of clouds um, because if you type in Japanese or Korean clouds you basically get the same results so I don't know or Oriental or East Asian or what I'm gonna assume is that China, like so often, was the one who actually invented that kind of style and other countries adopted it. So I'm, I'm gonna stick with Chinese clouds, at least for now, we'll see. Um, yeah, my aim is to... Well, you've seen me paint more kind of like realistic looking clouds. Um, and I'm also trying to learn how to make stylized clouds in many different kinds of styles. Um, yeah, and this is one of them that I want to try and, 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 and practice, and I kind of like that style a lot. And so I want to practice it a little bit more. You can see I already did some practices and studies. Um, but I feel like uh, um, there is still a lot of room for improvement. And so I'm gonna do a little bit more. Maybe change it up a little bit. And yeah. That is basically the idea. Hey Lucid, glad to see you. How are you doing? How is it going? <laughs> Thank you. As a fellow Undertale fan, I knew that you would appreciate it. <laughs> so yeah, let's open up a new layer. We'll see. Today my day was pretty alright actually, I woke up very early and in Discord I already talked about the lucid dream that I had and I'm not saying like lucid like I dreamt of lucid luminary here but I was aware of my own dream and was able to control it which was nice because I was able to turn uh, a kind of nightmare around into something fun. So that's good. It's rare, but it's nice. Uh, and yeah, during the uh, the forenoon, I was feeling a little bit tired after I woke up. D did a short nap, but now I'm feeling energized. I even went outside and um, and just. Did a little little drive, you could say. I just drove around with my kick scooter onto the the, the, the Danube Island, the the river that goes through the city. Vienna is called Danube, 
or however you would pronounce it. Um, and <clears throat> the thing is, we also have kind of like an island that sh stretches over the whole length of the city called the, the Nubi Island. And it's a very nice leisure place where you can just drive on your bike or in my case kick scooter or just take a walk with your dog or whatever it is. Um, the thing is about this island is that um, there are ba uh, like basically no buildings on it because it's supposed to be a, a flooding area so whenever there um, the, the tide of um, the river goes too high that island will be would be the first one to go underwater and it's kind of like a a countermeasure against flooding so that island goes down but the city remains unharmed and therefore you don't have any buildings on it which is extra nice because that means there is more there are more trees and and, and grass and stuff and that's nice <laughs> it's a nice little retreat and as I said it is basically the whole length of the city so it's pretty long With some with rooms of them. Happy little trees, yes. Happy little trees. Make people happy. But nobody says happy little grey concrete buildings. Nobody says that. So yeah, <clears throat> those kind of clouds are really neat to draw because you basically just have these round curves over and over again and then some kind of whirlies that go around here and there I could also decide to have like to kind of extend some of these curves and make them also whirly. And just go whatever direction I feel like. But there is a lot of room for just improvisation and creativity, which I like. Hey Ramika, how are you doing? Glad to see you here too. How is it going? Have you pretty much settled in in your at your new place? Be able to relax some more now. So one common thing that you can see for these kind of style of clouds is that they have the these kind of tails. If you've watched Dragon Ball, then you probably know of the of the of the cloud that Goku rides on. And you can only ride on it if you have a pure heart and stuff like that. And the design of this cloud is I mean the general show is more like Chinese inspired. And and also that that kind of cloud, the the design of the cloud is also clearly inspired by by those kind of um, Chinese traditional Chinese drawings of clouds and 
like you have this puffy and this in this puffy uh round cloud and a long tail that goes behind it and whenever goku rides the cloud it leaves uh, leaves behind a tail as you probably know so yeah <laughs> Uh, you're good. Yeah, that's great. Uh, it's great. It's very, I'm very happy here. That's wonderful to hear. Very happy for you. So the tail could like go in all sorts of directions where like it could curve it around. Sometimes the tail, if I show it off again with these kind of with these drawings that I did. The tail could be a bit thicker from what I've been seeing. Just goes to the side, could kind of, kind of like curve around or kind of merge with another cloud and all sorts of stuff you, you're able to do. Also, by the way, there are also kind of sub styles for this kind of style. Um, <clears throat> for these kind of Chinese styled clouds. Um, some are a bit more simplistic, some are uh, a bit more detailed, a bit more patterned. There are all sorts of different ways to also make the, these kind of Chinese um, Chinese clouds. Love Goku and his cloud? <laughs> yeah. Dragon Ball was certainly a fun show. And I especially mean the Dragon Ball show. Uh, without any letters behind the title. <laughs> it's very interesting to hear about it. Yeah, it's also interesting for me, for sure. Um, I'm probably not gonna talk about it too much in detail in the cloud tutorial because I cannot possibly go into all sorts of uh, uh, styles in detail. I would show it off shortly but then probably would move on. Uh, but I'm thinking about making a one minute tutorial about those kind of clouds. Which is also not a lot of time to explain much about them, so I wouldn't be able to give a lot of background information. But, you know, that's okay. Also, I'm probably not probably. I'm I'm going to only stream until um, seven o'clock, nineteen. No, no, not um, twenty o'clock, eight o'clock. Um, because Plip is going to stream today, and we're gonna rate her for sure. That is my plan. And so I won't miss her stream either this way. <laughs> Oh yeah, by the way, since, since I've been talking about Plip, only very tiny and it's a bit dark, but you can see Absolotl here in the background. <laughs> when I'm standing normally, then like often I'm, I'm blocking him, but well, you we can see him if I just stay stand center too. Unfortunately, I do not have any surfaces behind me that are closer. Um, so yeah, he's gonna appear very small, but he is there, and if you look very closely, you're able to see him. Maybe if I 
switch over to the face cam real short. There. Now you can see him a little bit better. <laughs> Hanging around, watching, observing, judging. Hmm. The exact same plan for this evening. Ah, <laughs> well, that's good. Let's all plan to completely overwhelm Plip when she starts streaming. <laughs> so those are kind of like the outer lines for the, the cloud itself. And that is not really enough. So normally you add like, you can add some additional details to like extra whirls here and there. And again, it depends kind of on the sub-style you're going for. And they're very different. The the kind of the sub-style that I like the most... Um, actually, I can maybe show off my references. Where do I have them? Over here. There we go. So those are the references that I'm looking at right now. Let me adjust the size. some references that I collected and you can see already some differences between them um, and the one that I personally like a lot is this kind of style it has a, a bit more extra detail and looks very swooshy <laughs> I don't know how to describe it <laughs> Um, but you can also see there are more like more simple styles like this these like if you compare the red ones and uh, that one here in the middle um, you see more whirlies on the red one like pretty much all filled in with that with those kind of whirlies whereas this one here doesn't have as many but then has some additional lines and curves within the cloud to give it more detail. Yeah, you can also make nice little patterns. I would probably love to have this sort of pattern as as for my my head clove. That would be pretty neat. Or as a shirt or something like that. Yeah. But you can see pretty much like all of them, or at least most of them, have these kind of tails behind them. This is something that you see pretty much all over the place. And it's not like... Like normal clouds, actual clouds in the sky, don't always have these kind of tails, but it is just the style that they are going for. And it looks neat. Yeah, yeah. Kitty is complaining because I closed the door to the bat, uh, not bathroom, bedroom. <sighs> there we go. Her like favorite places always keep on switching. Just, just, yeah. She just keeps on rotating through them. And right now, one of her favorite places is to just lie in, in my bed. But then, we don't have her here in the living room and nobody can see her. And during the stream, it's kind of a bummer. So I close the door and she complains, of, co of course, but you're gonna survive. Just for a few hours. A few hours. Hmm? Oh, there we go. There she comes. Yeah, 
Want to stay in front of the camera? Mm -hmm. How far is it? So excited now. Where lie down? Classic kitty, yes, yes. Little princess, thank you. Very much in cuddle mode now. So, let's give it more detail then. The tail definitely has some extra lines. Following the same curvature. And it's kind of a balance that it, you need to learn. You can also easily overdo it and just make it too detailed and just starts look starts looking messy at some point so when I draw these kind of lines, I'm not trying to make them like um, too regular looking, like too regularly spaced. Like I'm not gonna draw a line right in, through the middle of this space, because it looks too too ordered, too too I don't know. You need a bit more chaos. Might have scored, uh, scored your, uh, scored, scored me a raid. What? Uh oh. What did you do? Oh dear. Do I have to be scared. Now the, and the anticipation grows and grows. It's gonna happen. Uh, the thing is though, I kind of suck with... ...drawing very smooth lines that follow the exact same curvature. Even though I have correction on. Um, for the tool that I'm using. <laughs> Lucid promised. Lucid, Lydia. You delivered. Oh dear. Here they come. <laughs> Poor little guy.
Thank you, Cozy, for the raid. Ellie, <laughs> how are you doing? Ah, <sighs> Kitty Cat, yes. Thank you a lot for the follow, Sandman Bess. Oh dear. <laughs> ah, well, thank you, Lucid, for bringing them all here, for spreading the word, <laughs> apparently. I have you to thank for you for that too. So, how was your. S <laughs> thank you for the follow, Cozy. How was your stream? What have you been what have you been up to? Playing some games or did something creative? Something artistic? Enough the cat cam. Yeah, a lot of people are fans of the cat cam. <laughs> And me too. I love my cat and it's fun for me to integrate her into my stream. <coughs> What's okay, no artsy streams for me. <laughs> I'm untalented. Talent does not have anything to do with it. It's just a matter of practice and a matter of having fun. Uh, when I'm drawing, so yeah, I should probably explain. I'm drawing some Chinese styled um, clouds. To better explain it, I should uh, show off the references that I have. So, those are some Chinese style clouds. I'm, I'm calling them Chinese clouds because I assume the, the origin of the style of clouds comes from China. When you google Japanese clouds or Korean clouds, you basically get the same looking results. Um, I haven't really done any deeper research into that. I wouldn't really know how, because if you probably, probably if you google origin of oriental clouds, east asian clouds, like how to describe it, I don't know, so yeah, whatever, it's just Chinese. Uh, and why am I doing that? Well, I am researching, I am studying clouds in general and how to draw them because I want to make a drawing tutorial um, about how to draw clouds. Um, because that's what I do. I have a YouTube channel where I make drawing tutorials. I've been doing so for several years at this point. And yeah, next in the list are clouds. And I already have done some animals like cats, to nobody's surprise. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> bulls in the past, I've, I've been doing too. And all sorts of like other kind of basic tutorials like how to draw in perspective and color theory and so on and so forth. <laughs> Thank you, Lucid. I do have a command for that too. Yeah. If I remember it correctly, it was that one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> I should update uh, the text though. Well, well. Yeah, and I make other kinds of videos like time lapse videos, art discussion videos, or like other like tips and tricks here and there. Just I'm trying to be helpful for artists. I'm trying. <laughs> and here on stream, sometimes I do some of the studies that I do for the tutorials that I'm planning. Or I'm just doing something completely random. Like last time, I've been drawing a little plush that you can see here in the background. And I get a little bit bigger. There, this little axolotl guy um, because I won him on a raffle from the streamer Plipsus some of you might already know her and I did some little doodles of that of that guy and just had fun with it so <clears throat> 
turn off this. Oh, thank you, Lucid. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to keep it genuine. Also, I'm not really good at acting and being like pretending to be super hyper or, or I don't know what. Just trying to be me because that's what I'm best at. So yeah, um, I'm trying to kind of copy that style of clouds for myself and um, trying to work out how it works, how to establish that kind of style. You have a lot of curves, you have a lot of whirlies, which I'm always a fan of. I love drawing whirlies. And some other little details here and there that you can put into the in the into the drawing to make it more interesting. Also, I do sometimes gaming streams. Recently, not so much. But sometimes I do. Um, yeah, just trying to have fun while streaming. It's the main priority. Okay, what else should I do? Again, as I was saying, I have to be careful to not overdo it and just completely overload the drawing. But also too little detail and it kind of looks boring. <clears throat> so is anybody else here among the raiders interested in drawing and painting and if so feel free to share feel free to tell us what what you normally like drawing or to painting do you, prefer, do you prefer digital art i have a few friends who studied comics and they love using technology for the art yes um i mainly use digital art the only times when i don't is just when i go outside and draw while sitting in a park or something like that to kind of to mix it up but digital art has spoiled me <laughs> it very much has spoiled me there are just so many convenient tools that you have um, first and foremost the ability to undo steps like oh my god this is so convenient <laughs> and transform stuff and yeah it, it, like it. it's really cool and there are a lot of possibilities uh, you can have more of a comic-like style you can go for realism with digital art you can kind of copy the, uh, the, the style of traditional paintings too there are tools that for example, cop um, um, try to imitate the look of watercolors or oil paints or something like that. You can do a lot with it, depending on the program that, it, that you're using that is, of course. And I'm using Clip Studio Paint, and I find it very convenient, especially for drawing stuff. The, the distinction between drawing and painting digitally is not really clearly defined. For traditional, it's pretty clear. Like you draw with pencils and pens and, and and stuff like that, and you paint with watercolors and oil paints and so on. But as for digital, like, what's the distinction? And I normally say when I draw, it's like I have lines. And if you paint, then you just paint without lines. It's kind of the distinction that I normally go for. 
other people probably have other kinds of definitions or they just don't care. Welcome back, Sandman. <coughs> um, I love oil painting, embroidery, uh, landscape paintings mostly. I'm just a beginner, but it's so relaxing. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the most important thing, that you enjoy it, that you have fun, that it helps you relax. I've been very tempted to get into digital art lately, but the tablets are expensive. Yeah, if you want to get one where you can draw on the screen and not... Like, uh, I can show you. Uh, with this kind of thing I started. Just like a graphics tablet where you... You can see this is not the screen but just a platform and underneath you have the technology and you just draw on it while you look at the screen, at the different screen, so you don't draw directly on your drawing. And it's kind of awkward to get used to. Um, and when I did the upgrade uh, onto a Cintiq, um, <clears throat> we were able to draw on the screen itself. It felt so much better and so much na much more natural. So yeah, but of course it is much more expensive. Whereas that that thing back then cost me like 50, 50 bucks, uh, and nowadays I don't know what the the normal models cost, um, and what kind of manufacturers there are other than Wacom but yeah you can easily get a good one for even less than 100 bucks whereas with a tablet where you draw on the screen you have to definitely pay several hundred bucks at least it can even go beyond a thousand dollars or euros or whatever so yeah. <clears throat> for me, the investment, like you have to ask yourself, is it worth it for you? Um, and how much are you uh, using it? And for me, it definitely paid off. I'm using it all the freaking time. And I mean, I'm using it in a professional way. And um, yeah, it helps me with my work. Um, but if you're just a hobby artist, um, then I would say it depends on how much money you have available. And if you if you can spare it, um, if you um, have enough and you really like making art and um, yeah, then then I would at first recommend still to draw a normal graphics tablet. Um, a cheap one to kind of try it out <clears throat> and kind of try to get used to it a little bit and get uh, accustomed with the uh, with the uh, with the software and the tools that you have available. And if you like it a lot, much more than traditional methods, um, then you can go ahead and do the upgrade. Or maybe you have some, uh, you have a friend who likes digital making digital art, and you try it out um, uh, on their tablet and see how it works for you. Maybe they actually also have a one where you can draw on the screen. Then that's perfect. Then you can directly try it out for yourself and see if it's something for you. behind in the chat. I've been talking too much. <laughs> um, paint landscape. Uh, yes, I love following Bob Ross's videos. Ah, that's wonderful. We all here are fans of Bob Ross. We stand Bob Ross. 
he and his legacy and legacy are wonderful definitely a huge inspiration for me all right Ramika probably you're not here anymore but hope you have a lot a, a wonderful dinner uh, <clears throat> Totally here. <coughs> Sorry. Let me a little bit. <coughs> totally have done a couple in the in the past year and also painted some onto ceramic plates. Ooh, interesting. I never really painted on something like like ceramic plates or something like that. That's interesting. I imagine it's not the easiest compared to just regular canvas or paper. Oh, cool. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, also, you are invited to share your stuff in my own uh, Discord. Or just chat about whatever you want. It's a nice community there. Lots of lovely people. And you're more than invited to share your drawings and paintings that you do. And always very interesting uh, interest to see what people make. And not just drawings and paintings, but general, like also crafting stuff. I, I really love seeing that. And so you were absolutely invited to share some of that stuff uh, I collect trading cards to relax <laughs> organization is my relax relaxation yeah everybody has their own thing that's also cool oh yeah trading cards uh, it's been a while since I collected trading cards myself as a kid oh man or play Zelda yeah that's also very good that that one I still do and I will always do I will always enjoy Zelda <clears throat> I need to save for a new phone before the, my current one is struggling to survive oh yeah yeah phones don't really last all that long I think I'm pretty lucky with mine though I got mine in 2014 um, and it still works all right the battery is not the best anymore of course but other than that and yeah performance wise it also think it it's a bit worse than it was before but it works and it that's all that matters to me yeah i mainly just need it for like the smartphone functionalities on it would be just mainly being able to look at a map while I'm going somewhere. That's basically it. Other than that, a normal uh, mobile phone would also suffice me. <clears throat> okay, would you suggest either a good uh, quality tablet without a screen or a, a relatively cheap tablet with a screen? Well, my my recommendation would be as for like a, a those kind of graphics tablets without screen it it's it doesn't more, spending more money just gives you a larger size in terms of quality and accuracy they don't really vary all all that much even with the cheapest version like uh, i went for it works perfectly fine, you have enough pressure levels, enough accuracy, it, it, it works fine. Yeah. I can only speak for Wacom though. Um, I haven't really tried any other manufacturer's uh, graphics tablets, so I don't know about that. Um, yeah, just like, like try it out with a cheap one that you, you should be able to afford. And then maybe someday in the future um, you can make the decision to upgrade. 
either like if you like the feel of a normal graphics tablet without the screen then you can also decide to upgrade that one into a larger one uh, uh, or you, are, you go for for one with a screen and there are at this point several manufacturers um, in addition to Wacom which is a Japanese manufacturer um, there are a lot of uh, Chinese manufacturers at this point um, what were the names again uh, I forgot but there are some <clears throat> And there are several hundreds of dollars cheaper than a Wacom version. In terms of quality, this I have viewed some reviews a couple of years ago um, because I was curious, as simple as that. And they seemed alright. Like, none of the reviews were like super negative or anything. It still seems like the Wacom tablets all in all in all or still having a better quality but yeah a cheaper one should also be all right but yeah my main recommendation is if you have a friend who has some kind of digital uh, uh, some kind of graphics tablet or like a screen thing drawing screen then <clears throat> try out theirs, ask them of course, um, <clears throat> and see how it feels to you. <clears throat> um, I think I've only... the only painting I've done was more so just painting my feelings when I was going through it. Ah, but that's also a good reason to paint. A lot of people make art just simply to express their feelings and kind of let out their feelings in a way. I have done so in the past too. Uh, like sometimes when I'm going through some hard times then I get this sudden urge to just make art and express what I'm feeling, what I'm going through uh, into the painting and it helps, it helps. That does not necessarily help for everybody but in my case it helps and it's just, it's just art that you could also do just for yourself. Um, yeah. It's very difficult to know exactly how the colors will turn out on ceramic since it has uh, has to be fired. Uh, you need to write a number of codes too. Mm. Yeah, that sounds a bit complicated. Um, but cool, definitely very cool. Uh, it took ceramics in high school. Oh, cool. That's pretty cool of them to offer something like that at high school, especially at high school. Stuff that I did in high school was pretty standard. Nothing all too exciting. Well, we, we did carve some, some stands out of, I think, linoleum or however that material is called. It's kind of like soft. Um, how to describe it? Like rubbery material. And we did some prints with that. It was alright. Reason I've had a few private classes, but would have. Ah, okay. That's <laughs> what's a reply. It does sound very interesting, but I already have too many hobbies. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> I mean, you already, you're already already paint, and your paintings look very lovely for sure. Um. Yeah. You do you. But as far as art goes, I took art in high school too. I was once told to draw a house from a small photo uh, and had an eye for detail. Oh, cool. Mm. 
So maybe your uh, your way, like your strength in, in drawing is something like more structured, like architecture and giving, them, giving it a lot of detail. Mm. I completely failed art in high schools. <laughs> uh, maybe you didn't have a really good art teacher, that could also be the case. I recently got to procreate from my iPad and drew a tattoo at like, and that was pretty easy to get used to. Well, there we go. Yeah. <clears throat> Art at high school is often a hit or miss thing. Um, and if you don't really have a very good and encouraging teacher, then it's just tedious. It's just a tedious class. And, uh, and for something like that, you, you have to feel motivated. If you just feel forced to draw and forced to paint, nothing really good can come out of it. If you're just a student, that is. Especially. <clears throat> you're supposed to enjoy it. <laughs> and have fun with I'm coughing a lot today. Eat. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Rock rate seems fun to mess around in Yeah. I've seen some very good things about Procreate. Uh, maybe someday I will try it out myself too. I'm probably not gonna switch from Clip Studio. I do like this program here also a lot. <clears throat> but I'm curious. Someday I would, in general, like to try a couple of um, digital art programs and kind of see how they work and compare them. Um, yeah, and then I could I could make better recommendations. Right now, I just know Clip Studio and Photoshop. Um, but what I can say is, I do not recommend Photoshop. But if you already have it, then all right. You don't, re and if you don't really want to purchase another um, graphic software, then just go for Photoshop. But Photoshop is not primarily made for drawing purposes, painting purposes. It's like more like a built-in side feature rather than the main focus of it and you can definitely feel it uh, <clears throat> it when i compare it with clip studio for example clip studio offers so many more tools for making drawing more convenient and more and easier and it's so more yeah it's just Like for for example, for the longest time, um, Photoshop didn't even have a, a stabilization feature. Like to explain what that means is, if you don't have any stabilization when you draw a line and you're very shaky, then you can clearly see it as described here. If you have stabilization on and have it on a maximum, that can be very shaky. You see the cursor, but the line still stays uh, somewhat smooth. And that is really useful if you want to make long and smooth lines. And Photoshop didn't even have that. Only recently got added and... There are different ways to, ha uh, to have a stabilization feature for a pen. And the way they do it is actually also not that great. <clears throat> I could go into more details and um, how it works, but... Uh, 
I'm probably it's probably not that interesting. Uh, yeah, let's just move on to the next cloud because I feel like it's too little, but I don't know what to add and uh, whatever. Some Delta Rune music. Very good. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Give me some coffee. And solely how I felt when doing art in high school. I couldn't do what I wanted and better at. I could only do self portraits. Oh man, yeah. that sucks. Sorry to hear that. I have a rather unsteady head, so that sounds mega useful. Yeah, that, uh, that definitely would help you out a lot. My hand is also not really the, the most stable, I do admit. Uh, so... I use the stabilization feature all the time. And I do not consider it cheating or anything, it's just... It, you use the tools that you have. What matters is the end result. Thank you for the follow, Daddy Chuya. <clears throat> Same. They wanted creativity, but only within certain boundaries, yeah. Lurk. Enjoy your lurk. <laughs> um, my art teacher back then in high school was okay. Um, she was encouraging. For sure, like she always said, "Oh, your art is so great," and and so on and so forth. And like, yeah, uh, and not just for me. She said that uh, almost to an anybody who put in a, at least a little bit of effort. Um, but my problem was she didn't really teach. Um, a lot of techniques, a lot of know-how, it's just, okay, this time we're going to go for pointillism, and we learned about pointillism, where it originated from, and the uh, famous artists who used it and invented it, and blah blah blah, and so on, and then we were supposed to make a, a painting with pointillism ourselves, and that's it, just go for it make a bunch of dots nothing explained about like more detailed techniques and like when we when somebody wanted to i don't know draw a cat or something like that like where do you start where where were you going with that and like how to construct a picture of a cat and like we had no idea and stuff like shading color theory and and, and composition perspective it was barely taught at all the focus was may, way more on um, art history famous artists from the past and um, art styles, classical art styles that, or modern art styles and that sort of stuff was not really interesting to me. I am an artist but I do have to tell you classical art like that and again, all, all these famous artists that you normally know, like Picasso and so on and so forth. I don't really care about that sort of stuff, I'm gonna be honest. It's, it's really boring to me. 
When I when I wanna when I see art I want to have something amazing looking that still clearly tells me what it's supposed to to show and has impressive shapes and colors and so on and so forth. It, yeah. That's what I like. And so, for example, in the um, in the last, what's called again, Zeugnis, um, I have to translate. Also, if you don't know, if you haven't noticed it yet, which I would be very surprised, English is not my native language, <laughs> but um, German. And so, I'm not the best at English. I'm also not the best in German. I'm not the best in talking in general. So, yeah. Report? Is report? Where you get, like, all the, the grades at the, at the end of your semester. Is this report? No. Certificate? School report. No, right? Report. Yes. Okay. Sounds weird. I, I imagine something completely different when I hear report. Like, I guess it, it reports you something. It reports you your grades. Okay. Anyways. Like a report on your performance. Yeah, I get it. I get it. It's just... I guess I'm not used to report meaning that. But yeah, in my final report that I had and on my on my last year, I actually got a C grade in art, <clears throat> just simply because I didn't care at all about writing about old artists and art styles and blah 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 and so on. I just didn't put any effort into it. I liked making paintings and drawings. Um, that's basically all I did and neglected a a a everything else. <clears throat> um, gotta go start dinner. Have a great rest of your stream. Thank you. And again, thank you a lot for the raid. I really appreciate it. And hope you're gonna have a nice dinner. Weirdly, I loved woodwork in high school. My teacher was a pro. Oh, you had woodwork. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess I also had it. For me, woodwork was not really interesting either. Because, again, we weren't really taught anything. We were just... We had instructions. We were supposed to build... Um, for example, a little, a little airplane out of uh, wood of balsa wood, for example, or a boomerang. All right, we got, and we have, we're supposed to get the wood by ourselves, and then just go for it. Just do your thing, try your best. Do whatever you want, you have all the tools available, just be careful, and that's it. Uh, <clears throat> ah, it was not, really all that interesting either. Uh, yeah, they didn't go in, yeah, into enough deep uh, depth in the style they wanted us to follow. Mm, yeah. My art teacher in high school wasn't even supposed to be an art teacher. They scrambled to find someone and just picked them. So, yeah, it was chaos. Ah, oh, man. <clears throat> Yeah, I guess maybe also a shortage in art teachers is maybe the problem. I don't know about that sort of thing. It could be the case.
Roll off the story. Bob Ross is a better teacher. <laughs> Bob Ross is definitely better than pretty much any high school teacher for sure. But that's a very, very high bar. <laughs> <clears throat> I think a lot of people would prefer, uh, prefer to create rather than learn about art history. Yes. I mean, I guess you also got to learn a little bit about it. It's it's part of it. But I just don't like that it is the main focus. Just sure. It would be good to know that you at least know who Picasso was and what surrealism means or stuff like that. But those kind of things can be explained very easily and quickly. You don't have to uh, fill out the whole curri curriculum. Is that how you pronounce it? With just that. It's boring and... Making art, being creative or crafting, that sort of stuff, I find very important. And if you have crappy teachers that demotivate you to, to, to be creative, then that's a huge bummer. And you just live your life and think you're not talented um, or it's just not your thing. And that, in my opinion, it can be... It, can, it could be the thing for anybody, if they just, I don't know, get, get a good access to it. If, if they properly get motivated and nowadays I also feel like often you hear, people just don't start it because they compare themselves to actual professional artists and crafters. And they say they are so talented, I'm never gonna be able to get to that level, and, wow, and what's the point in even starting? And that's, in my opinion, the wrong mindset to have. But that's not what making art is all about. It's about having fun. About visualizing your ideas about um, just relaxation um, about expressing your feelings and expressing experiences and so much more I, I could go on and on probably meow meow I'm complaining again my gosh come on. Pillows are better, alright. Hmm. 
Oh yeah, another thing that I did today um, was to just come up with a bunch of art-related questions. Um, because on YouTube, a thing that I do right now is just to ask poll questions every couple, like every two or one weeks. Um, just because, just have fun. And because it's interesting to see what people answer. And so on my community tab, I got a bunch of polls going. And I ran out of polls that I scheduled a couple of weeks ago. And so I made a new batch and came up with 50 new questions that I scheduled over the next two years. So, I'm set. <laughs> and not always and not only am I interested in seeing the data and how many votes there were, but also what um, extra detail the and the people comment, and it creates sometimes some some interesting discussions. And I like that. Always good to prepare, yeah? Absolutely. And every now and then I could also bring up some of the questions that I had on YouTube here on stream. For example, let's see. Uh, what was one of the, the more recent ones? Oh, yeah, <clears throat> the most recent one was what kind of colors? Uh, what are your favorite colors to paint with? Normally have a poll so you have like choices but here in chat, you can just say whichever color you want. Also, you are more than invited to um, join the polls on YouTube too, and and tell me what your opinions are. So yeah, well, yeah. What are your favorite colors to paint with? Um, for me personally. I like turquoise a lot. Um, problem is just turquoise. There are not a lot of uses, direct uses for turquoise uh, when painting. It's kind of like it's hard to integrate. Um, for example, when I do a landscape. Turquoise doesn't really appear all that much. You have green, you have le yellowish greens if you have, have vegetation. <gasps> and turquoise kind of makes it c cooler. So like you would have it in the shadows, but the main color would be normally something different. Um, but one of the main areas where I really, really like that color uh, would be to draw something magical kind of magic or like some glowy hair or something then I really love using turquoise it, it's always hard to decide to to say which is your favorite color because it always depends of course what you're trying to paint uh, and yeah
I love using all kinds of gradients for skies. Pink fainting to blue is pretty common one. Oh. Your skies, there you have a lot of colors that you can use. Uh, not just only from the natural colors, like the blue sky that kind of has a, a gradient from a lighter sky blue to more of a dark blue uh, as it goes away from the horizon. <clears throat> and there's of course a sunset, which is like again it starts um, at the top with, with more of a blue and then slowly shifts into uh, into the yellow and orange uh, and at first it's like kind of like grayish and then the colors get more intense the closer you get to the sun and yeah but you can be creative of course and you are not bound to realism when you paint you can just do whatever you want you can have a red sky and make it really intimidating yeah, you can have like a purple sky and make it kind of like magic -y or something and like Whatever you want and like whatever kind of combinations you want. It's totally up to you <clears throat> There is the sort of teal you get in sunset sometimes. Yeah, it's a gorgeous color. Mm, okay I actually didn't know about that in sunsets you see Hmm Sky colors is definitely something that I still should look into more. Also, I'm not re really getting a lot of progress done here in this painting. I have to say that's, that's very common for me. I realize that, that when there is a lot of discussion going on in chat, then I focus less on the drawing, which is fine. It's actually, I like it a lot. I like it even more. Um, it's just very hard for me to focus both on the drawing and chat at the same time. So, yeah, I have, have to make a decision. <clears throat> Uh, pinks and oranges are so nice too, and to make sunsets with like a wild card color thrown in there. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Art of bad or strange weather is really underrated. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm starting clouds, so um, I can also show that to get to get back to the references. This is just a small part of the references that I have collected. So if I zoom out, you see I have way more. <laughs> this is all the reference pictures that I collected for clouds. Just clouds. And you can see there are various types of clouds. Um, so the normal one that you will normally associate with, with clouds when you think when you're supposed to think of clouds are cumulus clouds, these puffy little um, round things with a, kind of like a flat bottom, at least for the for the larger ones. Uh, and then as you go higher in in the atmosphere, you get these kind of cumulus patterns of smaller cumulus clouds uh, alto cumulus and zero cumulus where alto and zero just set, just indicates the height and zero is just basically at the limit it's just right uh, basically the top of the zero height is uh, where the <clears throat> what are the atmosphere layers called again Jeez, damn it, I'm supposed to know this. Troposphere, ah, thank you. Where, where it starts and I could go into more detail with how that works, uh, but I'm not gonna overdo it because it, it would involve a lot of physics and I would have to properly explain everything about it. But there, you can imagine there is a hard uh, stop for where clouds can generate. And above that height, 
there are no clouds and can and there cannot be any clouds because of certain uh, properties of the atmosphere. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, stratocumulus. And then you have cumulonimbus, which are the actual clouds that can produce rain. So if you see clouds like that, none of them can rain. None of them. If you, uh, because a cloud has to have a certain height. And a cumulonimbus cloud is basically goes from ba basically the bottom goes all the way up until the where where the uh, troposphere uh, no the, the stratosphere oh yeah troposphere is the <laughs> sorry the troposphere is where the clouds are and where we are from starting at the bottom and then you get to the stratosphere and the stratosphere is the hard border and you can see it very, very clearly where the stratosphere starts because these cumulonimbus clouds go so high and go higher and higher and higher and they would keep on going on uh, but the stratosphere stops them and so they form this kind of uh, so-called anvil at the top and they spread out. This is, you can clearly see where the stratosphere starts. And they have some really cool shapes. Very fascinating. And because of that height, they can actually produce precipitation, like rain and snow. And that also, um, were, there are also lots of physics involved and so on and so forth, but I'm not gonna go into detail with that either because I don't wanna overdo it. I could, uh, and I, I, I would be very passionate about talking about that sort of stuff, but I understand that nobody, not nobody, but not everybody is into that. And then we have strat, um, stratus clouds. So these cumulus clouds are more compact, little fluffy things. Stratus clouds are just spread out and you don't really see a clear boundary it's just the whole sky is gray those are stratus clouds uh, and they also come in different altitudes um, one cool thing or some cool things like you can also distinguish them uh, because for example like stratus clouds normal ones are just gray it's just boring uh, alto stratus clouds are a bit higher uh, and thinner and you can s notice that because if the sun shines you can s see the sun, uh, the sun the sun through these clouds very faintly but still and that can kind of can tell you what kind of stratus cloud it is and zero stratus clouds are especially cool because the, uh, the clouds are so high up and so thin that they actually cast this rainbow halo around the sun and that's how you can tell it's a zero stratus and then there are nimbus stratus so very very thick stratus clouds which are again thick enough to produce rain and, and snow and then there are special kinds of like cirrus clouds which are very uh, high up and create all sorts of very interesting patterns and strokes and, and very fascinating and very complex sometimes not easy to figure out how to paint those and you have lenticular clouds clouds that normally form above mountains and stuff like that and they kind of have this round shape um, I haven't really done um, that much research yet about this sort of thing, but I'm assuming that the original um, design of how people imagined uh, UFOs, of aliens and stuff, you know, the, the, little, the, the, the little dish there, it's just... Prob I assume it probably came from those clouds because people were weirded out because I don't know people came from kind of like flatlands visited some mountains and saw these clouds and were like 
Oh my god, it has to be aliens. This does not look normal. There we go. It's just an assumption of me, so I don't know for sure if that's the case. But it, would, it wouldn't surprise me. And then, yeah, condensation trails, contrails are also clouds. They're just condensation water caused by airplanes. And so on. And I took, uh, I collected pictures from different perspectives, like from above too, for example. Um, and during sunset or nighttime. And yeah, here's a lot. And right now, I mostly have done just cumulus clouds. Um, and I still have a lot more in front of me. And right now, we're taking a closer look at stylized clouds like these here. So, I hope that was not too boring just now. But I'm very passionate about that sort of stuff and explaining it. And, and yeah. I like I like explaining this stuff and that's also why I like making the tutorials I do because I can also put a lot of this extra information in there to give people a better understanding of how what the, the, the draw actually works. I'm gonna go watch some clouds this weekend. Yeah. If you get a basic understanding of how clouds work, it makes it so much more fascinating. If you know how they are formed, um, how they, where they are formed, and what kind of types they are, it's really cool actually to just look at the sky and oh, that's a cumulus cloud, and oh wow, there's a cumulonimbus. There's probably be gonna be some rain over there and, and stuff like that. Yeah. It's really neat. Looking at clouds might just sound like the most boring thing ever, but actually it's really nice. And of course, as you probably know, they come in all sorts of shapes. So yeah, some of the shapes can also be quite interesting and maybe even kind of entertaining. Love clouds and space talk. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Then you are are the right place. I really love uh, to appreciate the weather and seasons. Yeah, definitely. When you learn about clouds, then it's also unavoidable to learn about weather and even about uh, the climate. Uh, and I watched a video series about a uh, the climate uh, which also went very much into detail about clouds themselves and it was really interesting to watch I normally I just needed to watch the videos about clouds themselves but I just kept on watching and learned more and more about the climate the global climate and how it works and how it changes and how we influence it too which was the more upsetting part to watch but it's also very good to know Uh, yeah, like knowing about weather and climate, I also think is very important and very useful in some kind of ways too. And especially important nowadays uh, with global warming and stuff. Like, uh, there is just so much misinformation out there, and it, it would be good for people to learn about that sort of stuff so they can tell what is nonsense spread around in social media and what are actual scientific facts. As soon as I get vaccinated I'm going to 
my local science center and sit in an observer observatory can wait. Ah, oh, that sounds great. Hope that will be soon. There's this awesome planetarium in Edinburgh uh, where I've been wanting to go back to. Ooh, cool. The planetariums are also really cool. So you probably noticed that I do not just appreciate art, but also science a lot. I mean, my username kind of indicates that. <laughs> let's be let's be honest. <clears throat> hey there, Leia. How are you doing? Um, I'm running question, but do you animate? Yes, I do. Um, some of the alerts that you well, you probably missed them, but that played earlier were animated by me um, and in my tutorials in my main uh, tutorials that is the longer ones not the one minute ones um, I have little animations of the the little mink the, that I have as a mascot uh, Animation is not the main thing I do, so I only know some basics. <laughs> Start with me. Thank you a lot for the follow, Lostmeister. Thank you. We'll get going, but hope you catch another stream soon. Alright, have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are. Let's see. Would love to see you again, it has been nice talking to you. There's one, there's a startle. Maybe should it change the sound, although I like it because it's from Okami. But yeah. <laughs> Hasn't been the first time they got startled by it. Welcome, Leia. In general, just ask whatever you want. I mean, with, within reason, that is, of course. But if you're curious about something, about how I do things, or whether or not I do uh, certain crafts or techniques, doesn't even have to be art related, you can just ask me anything. Okami. I always imagine Hanzo yelling. Uh, Okami yo, waga teki yo uh, kudai. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just, just in case there is somebody in chat who is not able to to understand Japanese, just in case there might be someone uh, that means uh, oh wolf uh, devour my enemies. I think that would be the proper translation. Welcome. 
Bye bye, take you. Cool guy. <laughs> yes. How are your Japanese studies going, by the way, Lucid? They're going well. And now with school not distracting you all so much, you can maybe focus a bit more on it? I can definitely remember the last time we talked about uh, summer breaks and how freaking long they are <laughs> over here in Austria, uh, where you just have three months of... You can do whatever you want. And one of the things that uh, I did was try to learn more Japanese. Back then, I <clears throat> actually was planning on studying for at least a little while in Japan. My dream wa was it to live in Kyoto for a while and study physics. Um, and so I studied Japanese. I did uh, a language exchange with, with Japanese people. So they taught me some Japanese and I taught them German or English. I learned from books, from videos. I even went to a course. And also, the, the teacher that I had was very good. Uh, and yeah, but... Um, I'm also not the best at learning languages. It's just that learning Japanese was a lot of fun to me. And so I was able to keep on doing it. It's, it's very fascinating. But I'm just not very good at it. Especially at rem memorizing things. If there's something like grammar, where it like actually it's built on logic, then I'm able to understand it. Um, and also was able to pick up the pronunciation um, of Japanese pretty quickly. But memorizing, for, for example, memorizing vocabulary and stuff like that, I was not really good at. And all in all... Um, it didn't really work out and I was not able to get the stipend in order to study in Japan. Um, mainly because I did not really have a project. I was supposed to have a specific project, uh, um, a, a research project that is. And my specialization was in uh, photovoltaics or general environmental sciences, uh, but just saying that I want to study photovoltaics over there was not enough. I had to have a specific idea that I wanted to do and also give my reason as for why I want to do that in over there in particular and what is the point of doing it over there and not here in Austria, that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I um, did not really have any chance. Yeah, photovoltaics are so solar panels. So, solar panels could be like either photovoltaics or um, those kind of um, ones that are just dark and absorb warmth in order to heat up the water. There are two types of photovoltaics, voltaics, so electricity. Um, yeah, and so I was not was not accepted, and that was pretty much the end of it. And soon after that, I I stopped learning, stopped studying Japanese for the most part. It's still a lot of fun, but there are just other things that I have to focus on, and maybe someday I will 
do some more again, just just for fun. Well, no. Uh, and I think this cloud is also fine right now. Let's keep them maybe a bit more simple. Hmm. Uh, I've been going to some language exchange cafes online, which has been really useful. Yeah, I heard of that. Uh, so, good to know that they have been very helpful for you, and that's awesome. And it's also a nice way to get to know some people. I definitely was able to make some friends with this language exchange. Um, otherwise, otherwise it's been uh, Duolingo, yeah, it's also good. I need to crack down on vocab and kanji soon though. Mm, yeah, that's the memorization parts that I was terrible at. Kanji too. Kanji, learning kanji though was for me a lot of fun, but I just was not very good at it. In total I was maybe able to read like 100 to 200, like not 200, like 100 to 150 different kanji. And in order, like the normal recommendation of like, in order to le and read something like newspapers without struggling, uh, would be about 2000 kanjis. So. I was pretty far away from that, and those countries that I did learn were like the basic ones. Like the easier ones or the, the most regular used ones. And there are much more complicated ones that are used way, way less frequ frequently. Yeah. Gotta grab some dinner, see you soon, soon later, alright. Grab some good food. This kitty over there? No, she's just lying on the floor. And nobody can see her. Maybe I can just point the camera there. There's the cat, he's just very small on the picture. You really have to look very closely. But she isn't framed. This is like just another. Another spot that right now she likes a lot is just this particular spot on the floor. There. I don't know why, but it's just this specific spot, this corner of the rug that she likes so much and wants to lie at it all the time. Oh. Cats being a cat. Also, for my trip to Japan, knowing Japanese obviously was very useful. So, about one year after I my application for getting a stipend to study in Japan uh, was declined, I just went to Japan myself because I just really wanted to see it. I really wanted to visit it. I was um, a fan of the Japanese culture and language and anime and stuff like that too, of course. That sparked an interest. Uh, and I wanted to go there myself. And it was very convenient to have known some uh, people over there already too from a language exchange. So I basically was able to visit them and just stay at their place and hop from place to place and I stayed there for one and a half months even 
and started at Tokyo and then went from city to city so the order was started at Tokyo then Shizuoka I think was the next one uh, Nagoya so Tokyo was like Tokyo was a week then both Shizuoka and Nagoya were just one day each where I also stayed at the it's a small internet cafe so the thing is about um, internet cafes in in Japan is they're very different from ours they are kind of like a little bit also kind of like hotels so you have your booths uh, separated booths uh, where you have a computer and access to the internet and you can just um, either rent it during the daytime in order to do something on the internet and just uh, go and you, you pay for how much time you spend there um, or you just stay the night over there and you also get access to drinks and, and maybe some snacks it's also included in the price and it's very small and very uncomfortable to sleep there because you just got this tiny box that you sit in. You don't have even a chair or anything and just uh, normally it's just the, the, the floor is cushioned. You just sit there and lie there. Uh, but that's about it. It's not really well cushioned either so uh, we how to sleep on. You get a blanket though at least and a pillow. But yeah, <laughs> not the most comfortable, but it's cheap. It's way cheaper than normal hotels and stuff. So yeah, in Shizuoka and Nagoya, because I just stayed for one day, I just stayed at in some internet cafe and it's fine. Um, and then kept on going to Osaka. Where there I was like five days or something like that. Um, I was able to stay at a friend's place together with their family and it was a lot of fun. Then moved on to uh, Kobe, which is very close by of course. Um, and actually in that case I stayed at a Francis friend's place uh, but um, yeah we, uh, we also connected really well and we basically we also became friends very very quickly and I even went with them to Kyoto and together with other friends of theirs and it was a lot of fun. He walked around in a in a Yukata. And the last stop was um Damn it, what's called again? Uh, the place with the famous white castle. Whoa, what's called it? Damn it! It's terrible. A memory failing me once more. I need to look it up, otherwise it bothers me. Luckily, I can look it up fairly quickly. Kimechi, there we go. Kimechi. That was my last stop. Yeah, that was the whole trip. It was a lot of fun and I could keep on talking about the trip itself and what the kind of people I met and places I visited. But maybe another time.
And yeah, it was definitely good that I was able to go to Japan finally after being so fascinated about it for so long. It was definitely worth it. But I also learned more clearly that maybe it might have been for the better to not have gotten the stipend uh, in order to study in Kyoto. Well, for several reasons actually. Um, but one of the main reasons would be well, Japan is very different. And it's great to visit as a tourist. There are so many places to visit and see and ah, it's a lot of fun. Living there can be a different story. Um, and especially working over there. Because their work... Um, um, what's it called? Basically, they expect a lot from you. And it can it can be very stressful. Um, their their working culture is very different from ours, at least from our European ones. Eh? And yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that would have been for me. The expectations that I would have gotten at university would have probably been much higher than I and than they were at uh, the university here in Vienna and maybe I, I would have crumbled under that stress <clears throat> and you know as time went on I also figured out that studying physics was actually not really for me and you know, if I would have figured it out while being Japan or something like that, then ugh, got the, the whole stipend and all that stuff, and then I didn't really do anything with it, that would have been very embarrassing. It's just embarrassing, but uh, shameful even I would have felt. And I probably would have, um, would have taken me even longer to realize that studying physics and going the science route is not really my thing, because I, I was I visited even Japan and and studied it over there and I invested even more into it and letting go of it would have been even even harder than it already was back then for me. So, it's probably for the better.
All right, so I'm gonna stream about one more hour. <clears throat> and then Clip is gonna start streaming and I don't wanna miss it, so... We're gonna rate her and end the stream. Not her stream, my stream. <laughs> Just to be clear. Also, I gotta say, it's getting pretty warm over here, too. It took a bit longer than other places. I've been hearing people from the UK and, and the US complaining about the heat uh, much more earlier. <clears throat> but yeah, over here it's also getting hot. Even reaching 40 degrees. Um, but I don't mind too much actually. I actually like the heat to some degree. Literal degree. Um, And during summertime, I definitely enjoy the most uh, just going outside, going for a walk, or just driving around on my kick scooter, or just sitting down in the park and draw. That I like the most. The only problem that I have, the main problem that I have with with the heat is, um. It makes it more difficult for me to sleep. So... A weird thing that I have is... I can't stand it when my feet are hot. While I'm trying to sleep. It's just... A, a thing that just really bothers me. If, if my feet are cooled down... But the rest of my uh, my body is somewhat hot, and it's it's okay. I can deal with it. But my feet, no. <laughs> so it's also a story that connects with my my trip to Japan. Um, when I went to Japan, it was actually during the summertime. No oh boy, if you know a little bit about the Japanese uh, climate, 
then mm, you already you already see it coming so the japanese climate is much more humid than here in austria and gets much hotter so right when i got out of the plane it was like a wall of humid heat that i ran into it was it was something that I felt for the first time coming from Austria and just just immediate shock and yeah it, it was I was still able like during the daytime which is walking around and stuff I was fine I, it just it just was the, the, the sudden surprise of this wall that I ran into of heat um, but I was uh, doing okay, but just during the nights, um, even though they had air conditioning and on, like uh, like every household that I visited um, had air conditioning, and it's pretty standard over there in Japan. You gotta have it, and it makes sense because their climate is so much ho hotter than here. Like here in Austria, for example, we like barely anybody has air conditioning. We don't really need it all that much and just when it gets hot you deal with it uh, but it doesn't really get that hot normally in the future maybe more people will get will get air conditioning yeah but it will and so yeah um I was struggling to sleep over there and as I said like I started at Tokyo and so also the, the family that I stayed at over there was also really really nice and we talked about it and and they just when I, when I mentioned that I just really can't stand hot feet they just gave me an ice pack in order in order to cool my my not the ice pack and um, like a, a a cold pack it has some kind of i don't know what some kind of gel like substance that um basically has a lot uh, very high heat capacity so it can store a lot of heat uh which also means when it's cool when it's very cool um it takes a lot of energy, a lot of heat in order to warm it up a certain temperature. And so it's, it basically means it stays cool um, for a long time. That's the point of it. And so they, and they gave me that and I was able to uh, like wrap it into a, a towel and put it on my, my feet and ah, oh, such a relief. And it made sleeping so much easier for me. And just every day when I wake up, I, I put it back into the, the freezer. And when when you go to bed, you just take it out and put it in a towel again and and enjoy enjoy it. <laughs> um, and when my time was over in Tokyo and I moved on to the the next city, they were actually so kind to gift me that cold pack. And I still have it till this day. It's right now still in my freezer. And so when it gets hot over here and I struggle with the hot feet, um, I also use it still to this day and just get it out of my freezer, put it in a towel and just put my feet on it. Wonderful relief. I can highly recommend it. If you also struggle like I do with that sort of stuff. was very very nice of them
Gimana ya? Oh gitu ya. Also, I think that I noticed just recently was um, my standing stamina is getting so much better. Uh, for context, I have this task not uh, um, not even for that long, just a couple of months. I got it in September or October last year. And it certainly needed to get some uh, need to get used to it because we, before that I didn't have a desk where I stand. In front of it. This is a height adjustable desk, so I can actually switch between sitting and standing, but just turning, 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 and lowering or uh, or raising the plate. And. Yeah, you need some. You need some some stamina. You need to have some some back muscles, and uh, your feet are also gonna hurt um, a lot when you are not used to it, like I was. And now, like for example, the the la the first couple of streams that I did uh, with the new desk, I I really needed to take some breaks in between just to sit down every once in a while um, but now I can just keep on for like three hours or even longer and just stand the whole time and that's totally fine my back especially is not really um, complaining all that much anymore my feet my feet a little bit more um, but also the thing is I don't really have very good shoes I do want to get some better house shoes. Um, the ones that I have are actually... First of all, they are... Um, they are... Much larger than 
actual feet and yeah they're they're not really properly adjusted to the shape of my feet either i don't even know like i, I think my mother got them for me back then when i was still living at her place like over 10 years ago and she just didn't uh, remember correctly what size my feet were i don't know um, but yeah, I had them and had them for a long time, over 10 years, like, I even had them before I moved here into this apartment. And that's the also, also another thing, they are very old, so uh, they're slowly falling apart. Um, just today I noticed that there were some parts uh, peeling off, and yeah, it's just... I need some new shoes and I will get some that are actually properly adjusted to the, the, the shape of my feet and everything so or nicely ergonomical or however you would call it ergonomical not ergonomic. well you know what I mean And I want to get them fairly soon actually, but the thing is, for something like that, I gotta go to a place and, and just actually try on some shoes. I cannot order it on, on the internet, That's that would be dumb. For something like shoes, you don't order it in the inter on the internet, it's just nonsense. You gotta have to, you gotta be able to try them on and walk around to see how they fit you, how, how they feel. It isn't like a t-shirt or something. Um, but, you know, the pandemic is still going and I want to minimize uh, human contact as much as possible. And if I can avoid it, then I don't go to places. And it's not that urgent that I get new shoes, so I can still wait some months, but yeah. It's... I can't wait to get some new ones. Well, I can wait, but you know what I mean. And standing without shoes, actually, yeah, that's that's much worse because you're just standing on a flat pa platform, not adjusted to the shape of your feet. They start to hurt so much more quickly. Yeah, that's not a viable alternative. Noticing my eyes get a bit tired. That's also another video that I want to make. It's just about taking care of your eyes, especially if you're a digital artist and you need to look at screens uh, very often. 
things you can do in order to uh, to lessen the strain on your eyes at least a little bit. And there are several things, and I want to share what what um, what I came up with, or what I learned. Programs that I use, and so on and so forth. The problem is just um, for drawing and stuff like that. We actually work with colors, and it's important to see what act what colors you actually use. You can't really do all that much in the screen settings, at least it is, um, because you don't want to change the colors that you're actually looking at. So one thing to you can do in order to lessen the strain on your eyes would be just to reduce the amount of blue light that your screen emits and kind of like make it warm and, and Windows even has an option for that called night mode or something like that which just basically lessens uh, the, the amount of blue light and some screens themselves have, have some inbuilt settings for that sort of stuff um, but yeah when I work with colors I don't want to reduce blue light because I still want to be able to see the blue as it's supposed to look like in order to work with it and yeah I just have the, the normal colors with all the blue light coming from the, from this drawing screen um, I mean right now I actually don't work with colors but I also don't want to switch back and forth uh, it's not that convenient for me so just keep it as it is the only thing that I can really do is just reduce the brightness of that screen it's pretty much all I can do But at least for the other screens that I have and other programs and and websites and whatnot that I look at at a regular basis, I can do a lot of things in order to make it easier on my eyes. And there would be things like using dark modes for if the app offers it or there are actual uh, extensions for browsers that can change some websites into dark mode that actually don't have the dark mode built in um and then yeah blue light filters uh, definitely very good either for windows the, the only thing is it applies to all screens at once, the thing that Windows offers. So it would also apply to the screen where I draw on, and this is what I want to avoid. It's, but there is uh, there are options, and I, for example, use a program that lets me adjust those kind of settings, <clears throat> settings um, individually for every single screen. And I did that, and. Um, just adjusted it for all the other screens that I have and left out my drawing screen. And there are glasses too, specialized glasses just for looking at screens that have inbuilt filters that reduce the, the, the blue light. Um, they normally look like tinted orangey looking um, glasses so if you have seen somebody working on the screen and wearing these kind of orange tinted glasses then that's probably the reason they just want to uh, reduce the strain on their eyes and not just look cool with orange glasses <laughs> I mean they kind of look cool but yeah they have a purpose
Kitty has calmed down. And it's on camera. Wonderful. We are blessed. Not quite happy with this one, but we're gonna move on. And so far... <sighs> the one that I like the most was... is actually this one here. Like how it turned out.
This time I'm gonna try to bring some more natural, more re realistic shape into the style. Make it less just round but have a more realistic humanist shape. Let's see how it will go.
I don't know if my microphone is able to pick it up, but if you hear some sudden FUD noises... Uh, nothing is going on in my apartment, but there are just some pigeons out there, and... The windows that I have um, have a little roof outside, above them. Which doesn't really serve all that much of a purpose anyways. But yeah, that's where the pigeons always land on and make a huge, make a huge ruckus and yeah, it's annoying. But well. But no reason to worry, there's nothing falling down, nothing breaking. Just some annoying pigeons. I actually like this kind of cloud build. Kind of like a combination of what I know of realistic clouds and this kind of Chinese style. It's pretty neat.
There was the fud again. Another pigeon has landed. Hmm, yeah, this is fine. I'm not so sure about how the tails turned out. They could have been... Hmm, they've got, uh, could have done a better job with those, but oh well. Hmm, I don't like it. I mean, it could, you could kind of interpret these uh, tails as the, hot, the, the warm air that is rising into the cloud as, and then the cloud condensates <coughs> and becomes visible. No. If the tail comes from below, that is, then it would make sense. <laughs> It comes like from the side like this, then that's not really how how it works. Maybe one more small cloud, and then it's gonna be time. Yeah.
All right, this that one also looks all right. Yeah. I gotta say, it's quite enjoyable to draw clouds like these ones. I don't know, it's just kind of more whimsical in a way than realistic clouds. It's a lot of fun. I would like to explore more kind of, uh, style, um, more styles to draw clouds in. Um, next, not exactly sure what kinds though. We'll see what we'll see what I can find. Oh, there's this weird line, all right. Um, yeah, so the the first cloud uh, turned out meh. There isn't really the cloud body itself is not really kind of boring. It's just basically this one large butt shape, you could say. And the tail is way too thick and doesn't really have variety in. in in thickness. What I mean with that is, like, for example, if you look at this tail here, like it widens and then narrows down and widens again and then narrows down. That kind of uh, flowy um, feel to it is, is, is very nice looking. Whereas that, it just consistently goes narrow and narrower. It doesn't really change it all that much. I didn't really do a good job over there. And that also goes for like this one here. Or, or this tail. I also wish that I did a better job with this one. Um, This shape here, like the body itself, should have been smaller and more converging towards this spiral here. This one, I mean, except for the tail, uh, looks alright, and it basically gave me idea to draw this one here, to kind of a bit more layered, you could say. Like there are um, sections of this body that are clearly in the foreground, and you can uh, establish those layers with those swirlies. Um, like if you have, for example, this swirly coming in and going around and then you continue it over there. This swirly and the direction that it swirls in, uh, in brings this part here to the foreground and this to the back. You kind of can um, it, um, influence, can manipulate this sort of look in, in that way and that's pretty cool. And so, I tried even more, uh, experimented more with layers in this one here and give it a bit more uh, of a realistic, realistic shape. It, it's still far from it, but it has more, feels more like an actual cumulus cloud and did a lot of layering as you can see. And that was pretty cool, and, and turned out alright, actually. Yeah, and so also uh, tried to do more layering for the smaller clouds, and it was pretty neat. So, um, yeah. I kind of like... I'm in the process of um, establishing my own style, in a way, for these Chinese clouds. And we were able to see before that there are actually several sub-styles for this style category of clouds. And, well, I'm establishing my own kind of sub-style in a way. And that's cool. Oh well, yeah, Kitty has left us, of course, right when we are about to, st to end the stream. Oh, of course. Oh. <sighs> Well then, um, 
so if you want to catch more of my streams I do not really have a regular schedule for my streams um, I just stream whenever I feel like it and there are some days where I feel less energized or maybe I just don't feel it for another reason you know uh, you, you, you just have those kind of days and when I stream I want to have the energy and be in the mood for it even though streaming itself energizes me and 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 excites me and, and talking to people makes me happy but still I already want to go into the stream with that sort of energy at least to some degree and so I don't really have a schedule but if you want to get notified a bit before the before I start streaming uh, you can follow me on Twitter there you get all sorts of updates um, or just join the discord server so I think I have a comment yeah yeah it's a bit messy I should try to adjust it a little bit so it's nicer structured for the world and discord too so feel free to join the discord it's a lovely small community uh, you can share all sorts of stuff um, that you make and i'm always very interested in to, interested to see what you make what you draw what you craft what you whatever it is whatever creative uh, outlet you put your energy uh, into i'm always interested uh, and you can talk about all sorts of stuff it's it's very nice over there um and yeah that's pretty much it and so as i promised right at the beginning of the from the beginning of the stream we're going to raid clip um now i also see that lucid has started streaming so if you're able to um go ahead open another twitch window open another window and open um lucid stream so we're gonna rate blip but i'm also gonna post the link to lucid into the chat and so if you can still stay here but also watch lucid then you're gonna join lucid and rate blip that would be <laughs> that would be wonderful a bit complicated i know um i'm definitely now gonna watch both of these streams uh, because i don't want to miss either one uh now i am kind of blanking out there we go ah no ah just need a link gosh damn it There we go. Okay. Well. Uh, no sound. Not yet. There we go. All right. <laughs> okay. So I see that Lucid is uh, streaming Frostpunk again, uh, a new game that came out uh, for free or uh, that came out recently and is for free on the Epic Store. So that's pretty cool. I also got it for myself. Maybe I will. Uh, play it at some point, well, no, no, but I just collect free games. <laughs> so, here is Lose It. I'm gonna post it several times because why not? So, open another window, open, open the link in a new tab, and say hello. Say like second raid or something that, like that. <laughs> I don't know. Sec uh, secondary mink raid. And we are also going to start a raid for Plip. There we go. Gonna start soon. And yeah, thank you a lot 
for joining here again thank you a lot cozy for the raid and to lose it for uh, making her raid us uh, i really really appreciate it both of them are have left already for their own stream slash dinner uh, but still i want to thank you a lot and uh, also welcome all of the new people that have followed today i was Lovely to see new faces, not faces, but new names. <laughs> All right then. And right now, have a lovely day slash night wherever we are. And see you next time.